Phenomenal. All right, official welcome to the Return to Assessment Day webinar. Uh, this evening, we're gonna be providing some update on the framework for returning to assessment days. And Dia is going to take us through. Over to you, Dia. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, as Cher mentioned, I'll be taking you on, uh, taking you through our game plan for our return to assessment dates, which are happening in three days. Um, so I will just share my screen with you. everyone can see that. Perfect. So to begin, um, as I mentioned, oops, our assessment days are beginning. Um, well, we're starting with our gradual re phasing in beginning this Saturday, which is August 15th. Consideration for requests for assessment days from clubs um, will be given uh, two clubs based on the length of time the club has been back on the ice um, and the number of assessments that they anticipate. So we have already received um, some requests just where people are with their summer seasons. We just had a few um, based on as everybody knows ice availability that are coming up shortly. Um, so we have received a few requests that have been sanctioned and approved and we expect more um, as we um, march on into the fall. A maximum of one assessment day um, will be scheduled between August 15th and September 30th to ensure that we can service the greatest number of clubs. Um, as everyone knows, things are kind of in a whole bunch of different spots for different clubs. We just wanna ensure that we're able to um, maximize the opportunities for uh, our greatest number of skaters. In terms of availability for our assessment dates from now through uh, September 30th, we'll be operating in a very similar model to before March. As in, I will be emailing um, when an, an approved assessment day um, comes up to inquire about availability. Unfortunately, just in terms of timing and where we are and where people are in terms of returning, they are not um, both together or batched by month as we've been previously doing. They are a bit of one-offs from now till September 30th, but you'll receive an inquiry based on your geography and the disciplines that you assess that will ask whether or not you're available for that assessment day. And what's something that's a bit new is asking if you're able to be a sub for that assessment day. So you'll simply reply to that email with I'm available or I'm not available or I'm not comfortable returning. We um, want to make this a safe and smooth transition for everybody. So if you're not feeling like you're ready to come to assessment days, then there's no pressure. They will be here when you're ready to return. For assessment days that, um, that are happening between sort of now and September 30th, I forgot to mention that your, the assessment coordinator will follow up with you like they traditionally do, and they'll be communicating um, what the uh, protocols at the facility will be, the, log the logistics and the schedules that they usually do as well. For assessment days from August, sorry, October 1st and onward, we're gonna be moving to a new digital system and we'll get a bit of a sneak peek towards the end of this presentation. And for those availabilities, they'll be coming through an online request system. It's very exciting. So assessment days and what's going to happen once you arrive. There's a number of health and safety protocols um, around the return to play for COVID-19 that are in place. And they're also in place for assessment days. Uh, your safety is our utmost priority and as it is for all of our members, we want to ensure that everybody is staying safe at our assessment days. Our assessment days are part of the training um, in our return to play guidelines. So you might've already looked at those. They can be found in our COVID info center and we'll have the links available to you also at the um, end of this webinar. In particular, I'd like to highlight a few areas. Everyone will be required um, to complete our Skate Ontario um, COVID-19 waiver. So you'll, oops, sorry of this waiver form. They're available in the COVID Info Center. You'll complete them and return them to me. I will log that you've completed your waiver 
your assessment coordinator shouldn't be asking you for the waiver and they'll verify with me to ensure that you've completed it. This is a requirement for returning to assessment days and assessing. Um, it must be completed for you to assess at that assessment day. If it's not, you're not able to, if there's something in there that you don't feel comfortable with, then we'll, we'll make alternate arrangements, but we just need you to be aware that that is a waiver that is required. If you've already completed this waiver um, and you've returned it to Therese or um, someone else in the, our staff team, please let me know and then I can retrieve that um, from them to make sure that I've got you noted as complete. The other, um, the other important piece is our health screening questionnaire. So this health screening questionnaire is required at every training, every day, every time as part of um, our COVID-19 protocols. It's recommended that evaluators complete the health screening questionnaire 48 hours prior to your scheduled assessment day. If you answer yes to any of the questions in the health screening, um, you're not permitted to participate in any ice or off ice club or skating school activities. Um, we do ask for the 48 hours. So if we're able to find a sub or um, call a sub from a sub list or make alternate arrangements so that we have a little bit of time to do that, we know that if you screen positive um, on the day, that that may or may not be something that we can arrange, but it will provide a little bit of lead time for us. The health screening questionnaire must also be completed upon arrival at the arena on the day of the assessment day. So you'll complete it in advance and then you'll complete it on the day. As I mentioned um, with our sub list, we are gonna ask for available subs for all of our slots. Um, definitely for the um, next little while for sure. So if you're able to perhaps maybe not commit to a day or unsure, but think you could sub or you may have availability, it would be greatly appreciated if you could let me know. And um, we'll make sure that our assessment coordinators get that information. So you may be contacted by an assessment coordinator if you um, indicated that you're available to be a sub. Another document that will be completed on the day, and this will be done by usually by the assessment coordinators um, or a club volunteer at your assessment day, is a participation in health screening tracking sheet. They will be recording your name, your phone number, uh, the result of your health screening questionnaire um, in the session participation tracking sheet on the day of the assessment day, and that's part of the contract uh, tracing guidelines. Dia, can I interrupt for a moment? Yeah. We just have a question in the chat. Uh, will healthcare professionals be able to evaluate on assessment days? Um, Sharon, we made some amendments to that, correct? Uh, yeah, I, actually I can answer that. Um, so there are some, th some professions that can be exempt uh, that have, for example, the travel restriction exempt and those types of things. Um, I would check in with your municipality to confirm, uh, but we are um, we are recommending that um, there are exemptions for um, healthcare professionals if, as long as they're taking the um, approach at work, they're making sure that there's PD, um, they have their equipment and that kind of stuff. Sorry, I can't seem to spit that out tonight. <laughs> Is that helpful, Jamie? Yes, thank you so much. Okay, perfect. Okay, go ahead, Dia. Perfect. Um, so as I mentioned, that, that information will be um, recorded. We, our assessment days will also, the current, um, will also follow the Skate Ontario current session number guidelines. So the evaluator must be included in the number of individuals on the ice for the purpose of assessment days. So, um, so clubs must stay within their required maximums according to the stage that they're in. So everyone is in stage three as of today. So, um, that those maximums are 20 individuals for stage three and um, with a maximum of 15 skaters. How a session is, size is determined in terms of the scheduling and people kind of coming in and out of a session and who's considered part of that exact session, that's gonna vary by club and by municipality that they're in and by the facility and additional guidelines that are in place. So your, your assessment coordinator will know the specifics about their municipality and their facility, and they're going to go through that to you with you when they go through the logistics for that day. And that includes, um, you know, any amendments to the size. We have some 
we have some clubs that have smaller, sorry, some municipalities that are requesting smaller numbers, um, face coverings, entering and exiting procedures and any areas that you may, may need to be in or need to be aware of. And as I mentioned, these guidelines are in addition to Skate Ontario's minimum requirements, which are um, indicated in our COVID-19 program, return to play protocols. So there are definitely variances and there's not actually a blanket answer for that one. So it's really important and your assessment corners know and they're, they're great and they're doing an amazing job rolling with the punches right now in each different area of the province planning for um, planning for assessment days and planning to keep everybody safe. They're going to know the specifics. So they'll be obviously definitely offering that up. But if there's any questions about those specifics, please um, contact them directly. Perfect. So, Dick, I have another question here for you. Sure. Are you ready? So yes. um, just to, if you could clarify who the health questionnaire is going to um, for the one that's 48 hours prior to the assessment day. Sorry, who it's going to? Yeah, so where does that sure, sure. Um, get? That, yes. um, that will go to the assessment coordinator. They'll make a determination either that there's a yes or there's, you know, they're all no's. And then um, that information will only come to myself if uh, we need to call a sub in from the sub list. So those are, that information is remaining with the club. Does that help? I may, may have lost Sharon. Great, so I'll just move on um, and Sharon will join us in a second. So uh, physical distancing at assessment days must be maintained um, at all times. So you should be two meters apart from pretty much everybody. So skaters, coaches, volunteers, um, like I said, the assessment coordinators are doing a great job of mapping out where people need to be and communicating that information. They'll fee they will provide feedback and on um, any other um, special protocols that are in place for where you need to be. So your feedback will have to um, sort of be either written or you know from two meters apart. So far, that seems to be working uh, working out. So in terms of making that happen or planning to make that happen. Uh, they will also have sanitized areas for you to um, remain in. So if you are going to be at the boards, those areas are going to be sanitized before you get there. And um, they'll also be able to tell you the last time they did it. There's, you know, they're basically scheduled. So if you have any questions about your safety in those regards, just please speak to your um, assessment coordinator um, for that particular assessment day. And they're going to be able to answer that question um, for you. In terms of most of you do this anyways, but providing your own gear, pens, um, tissues, anything like that, there are there's some hospitality provided depending on the club and the requirement of the facility and the municipality. But we're just recommending that you bring your own stuff like you usually do. So pens, tissues, clipboards, whatever you usually have in your kit. Um, if there's a concern, you know, most people are wearing gloves anyways inside the arena but having gloves and your own PPE are all things that you're more than welcome to do to your own comfort level. A full listing of the protocols can be found in the Skate Ontario replay, Return to Play protocols um, in our COVID-19 info session. Of, um, perfect, so I'll also have that link up, so if you need to know where to go, we will have those links up in the chat box or they might actually be in there now for you. On to exciting news. So this coming this fall, we will have a, a digital tool, as I mentioned, for assessment days. So this is just a bit of a, this is just a screenshot of something that you'll see on your end as an evaluator. So this will be part of your, you know, your profile. This will be for yourself. This shows a current opportunity. We're currently in our building stage. So we'll have further information um, that will be out towards the end of this month. That's going to look at, that, that's going to look at when our trainings will be offered, what the print resources are. We're going to have a couple webinars, both for evaluators and assessment coordinators. Um, that will go through how to use these. So just a bit of a sneak peek 
um, and what you can expect there. So uh, some of the highlights of things you're going to be able to do are you're going to be able to see available assessment days, which is kind of the one activity here, which is the Winter Club of St. Catharines. You're going to be able to accept this assignment. You're going to be able to communicate with assessment coordinators and myself at Skate Ontario. Um, your, in your profile will be um, your disciplines that you assess, and that information is going to be available. So an assessment coordinator is going to know if, um, you know, if you can assess dance or if you can assess start a, or start a six to go free skate and have that information handy, it should make our communications um, much easier and much more transparent and much quicker. And I know that was something that everybody's been looking for. Assessment coordinators will use the system to request their assessment days to view your availability. Uh, one of the great features with this tool is you're actually going to be able to put general availability in that you're available to, um, you know, Tuesday afternoons or Tuesday evenings or the third Sunday of the month, you're going to be able to indicate that availability. So it'll mean that you'll be able to connect with avail um, available assessment days um, easily. So this will be the system that we're going to be taking assessment day requests in um, from October, October onwards. Uh, from October 1st to December 31st, we will um, also be looking at permitting one assessment day per club during that time frame. We understand that's going to be a very, we anticipate that will be a very busy period, and we want to um, ensure that we can service as many clubs um, that are coming back online and that will have a number of assessments to assess, especially some carryovers from the spring. So um, look for that information. It will be in a direct communication by email. We'll have it in the JET newsletter. It will be posted in the official section of the Skate Ontario website. So it'll be in all those areas. Um, we'll, and then we'll ensure that you get connected with that information and there'll be tutorials and other help available. So even though it looks like there's a lot of things to do and log in, um, it will be it'll be fairly simple to use. I know one of the questions that we have received is about metric assessments and co-evaluations. As we bring, bring assessment days back online, we will be um, we will be also bringing metric assessments and co-evaluations in. The idea is to bring um, MAs or metric assessments and co-evals in in that October window to give our um, kind of give us a little bit of time to get our feet wet and back and orientated with um, a lot of new sort of protocols and restrictions in our assessment days. Um, and then we'll be bringing metric assessments back in. So we'll be phasing those in gradually, probably beginning in October. The initial priority will be to assess um, skaters first, as I mentioned, which is kind of why we have that time period. And the number of assessment, sorry, the number of opportunities is really going to depend on the gathering size at each assessment day. So if we're able to accommodate um, a candidate, then we will do that. If we're unable to do that, we'll have to um, find another opportunity. Uh, the opportunities will also, that we can accommodate, we're also hoping to Lou have indicated in our online system for our candidates. So it should make pairing up an initial opportunity um, easier. And if you are approached to do a co-eval, then the has to absolutely be approved by the assessment coordinator because they're going to be monitoring all those numbers. Um, candidates completing co-evaluations must also complete the daily um, health screening questionnaire and will be tracked in the session participation tracking sheet as well. Just a reminder, if you um, need to do Star Six to Gold modules. All the revised modules are now available on the Skate Canada learning site, and um, they are they are streamlined. Um, they're we really Skate Canada really took the feedback to heart and made the um, revisions based on um, evaluator feedback from those who've already completed it. If you've already completed a module, your achievements will remain in the Skate Ontario membership profile. There won't be 
any changes to those. So here is just our resources. I will leave them up and we will um, just move on to questions. And are you um, just taking a look at the questions? We don't have, currently have anything in there. Does anybody have any questions oh. with uh, what Dia was talking about? Or the processes or getting back to the rink, those types of things? It's a quiet group tonight, Dia. Just soaking in the enthusiasm for the new digital tool. <laughs> Uh, Maureen here is asking, uh, can the waiver be completed online? Sure. The waiver um, can, is a fillable PDF, so you are able to complete it online and then just email it back. Perfect. Um, also, do you want the waiver sent to both Dia and Teresa, or is that to wait until an assessment day? Um, you can send it to either, either, and you can send them in advance. You can send them now. We're definitely, I'm definitely reaching out to anybody that's um, already confirmed for an assessment day. And I know that Teresa's received a few as well. So feel free, we will log them. We promise not to lose them. And um, they, if you would like to complete it now, please feel free. Perfect. Um, so if you're approached to do a test day, can you agree? Or do you wait to get Dia to ask if we're available? It's a million dollar question. Um, as we have sort of, you know, lived the dream of store six to gold and COVID and a return to assessment days, it would, we know that you're being approached, like we're, it's just the nature of life. So if you're approached, just please let me know. So we are operating on that system. Please let me know. Actually, it's, you don't have a choice. Let me know. <laughs> um, it's really important that we know what's happening, especially as people are returning to training. So if you're approached and you're available, just say, hi, Dia, I was approached by this club. Just send me an email. You can either you can send it to the assessment days email address, which is assessment days at skateontario.org. Just say, hi, I've agreed to this. We'll make sure your waiver is complete and that you have the source six to full disciplines um, that you'll be assessing. So the official I answer is every, all things should come through the Skate Ontario office. The reality answer is we know that you're being approached and as people, um, are trying to get things lined up because of the new restrictions that they're trying to make sure there's an evaluator. So just please let me know. Great, thank you. Um, how will mentoring be handled for evaluators who need to complete gold assessment levels? Sure, so that is the mentored assessment process I talked about just a few minutes ago. Um, if you have not already completed the modules, then please make sure that those are done. If you just need to be connected to a mentor, um, there is a form, of course, that's the one resource I don't have up here. Um, I'll, we'll just get you connected to the form. It is on the um, officials page as well of the website, and it's just requesting um, a metric assessment that you need to complete that for your source six to gold qualifications. And then once we have metric assessments back online in October, we'll ensure that you're connected to a mentor and that you're able to, to get through that. One thing I do want to say, and I know that Amy Tifo is on the call as well, is that Skate Canada is looking at some alternate learning tools for the mentored assessment. We're just, they're not, just not quite finished. So there might be some ways that we are able to move people through um, sort of in a more virtual format, but we'll have further details about that coming soon and when they're available. Perfect. There are not um, any other questions in there. Do you want to give an update for what's to come in September? Very exciting. What's <laughs> coming in September is um, on September 2nd at 7 p.m. We have our SAR, our SAR 6 to Gold refresher for evaluators. We know it's just kind of a crazy condensed time for SAR 6 to Gold in the fall and the winter and then COVID. So this is an opportunity um, to get an overview of the um, revised modules, to ask any questions you have about Star, Star Six to Gold, um, even to discuss any experiences you've had from evaluating from November to March. 
that we're taking all those questions. We'll have Amy and we'll have a panel of amazing um, Skin Ontario evaluators to help um, answer those questions, look at solutions, do all those really great stuff, and also to make sure that everybody feels com comfortable with the material. We know that it's not super different from what you're doing, but um, you know, no silly questions. When you register for the webinar, there's an area to ask those questions in advance to make sure that um, we get you those answers that you need. Perfect. I don't see anything else. Does anybody have any further <coughs> questions? I'll just give it a minute. If there are any last minute um, questions where you're like, oh, we talked about this on the webinar and I don't remember, or um, please feel free to reach out to me either um, at the assessment days email address or my personal email address, sorry, not my personal, my other Skin Ontario email address, and we'll get you the answer to that question. And we're really excited that assessment days are back in T minus three days. And I know that skaters are also super excited and they're looking. Um, for your amazing selves to be um, assessing them. So yeah. have a good night, everyone. Um, and then don't forget to uh, join us on September 2nd. Dia, there's one more question for you. Sure. I had one pop up. So will assessment days have approximate times associated with them in the new tool? Yes, they will. So they will have, um, they will have like the time that the ICE is booked for. Um, they'll have a modified time. You'll get an update if anything's been changed, like if the day shrunk in half, um, you'll get any changes to the time there as well. And you're also able to um, indicate your availability in specific time windows as well. Excellent. Thank you. If we don't have anything else, I hope you guys have a great night. Thank you for joining us tonight. And uh, we'll see you next time.